Hi, welcome to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, we're going to learn the three to seven player game Between Two Cities, designed by Ben Rossett and Matthew O'Malley and published by Stonemeyer Games. There are also rules included for one and two players, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. Your reputation as a master city planner has drawn the attention of two separate developing cities who have each paired you with other busy city planners. So you'll need to collaborate, but be shrewd, to ensure that your partners are giving your cities the attention they deserve. So join me at the table and let's learn how to play. First, shuffle and draw one of these seating randomizer cards and use it to determine the seating order at the table. For example, you may end up sorting the players alphabetically by their city of birth. Or if you'd prefer, you can just deal one of these to each player and then sort them based by the unique number they've been dealt from lowest to highest. Either way, players will want to sit relatively close to each other with an equal distance between them, like you see in this illustration, because the players are going to be each building a city with the other players on either side of them. Next, place the scoreboard in the middle of the table and a unique city token between each of the players. I'm setting up here for a three-player game. For these purposes, you'll have to imagine that there are two other players, one seated here and another here. You then place the matching city tokens beside the scoreboard and you can return the rest to the box. The scoreboard isn't used until the end of the game, so for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to set it aside for now. Shuffle these rectangular tiles into a face-down stack that you should place in a central area, along with the rest of the tiles that you can mix face-down into the box. And finally, give each player a reference card. Again, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to set the tiles to the side, but as I draw them, you'll understand where they're coming from. And that's the setup. In between two cities, players are going to be building two cities. One with each player seated on either side of them. And these will be built using the various tiles, and you'll score points based on which tiles you use and how you position them. But remember, your partners are also building cities with you and one other person. So you'll want to negotiate with them to ensure they're giving your cities the most attention. Because at the end of the game, you will only score points for your lowest valued city. So working well on both of them is going to be important. The game is played over three rounds that are broken into steps that all players play simultaneously. In the first round, players each draw a hand of seven tiles, as I've done here for each of the players at this table. Then they secretly choose two of the tiles from their hand and place them face down in front of themselves. The unselected tiles are then placed underneath of the city token to their left. This signals to the other players that a player has finalized their choice. Once every player has chosen their two tiles, they all reveal their choices simultaneously. Now players put their chosen tiles into cities. But here's the catch. One of your tiles must go into a city you're building on the right with the player to your right, and the other must go into a city on your left that you'll build with the player to your left. And they're going to be doing the same thing. So at the end of this step, there'll be two tiles in each of the cities. So now it's time for open negotiation. I might look at the player on my right and say, listen, I have an office, so do you. Those will go well together. Why don't you put yours here? And then to the player on my left, I might be, well, I only have this house left over. You have a factory? That's not gonna go well with my house. But it would go good over with that city you're building over there. Why don't you instead put that shopping mall over here with my home? Now we'll see later why pairing up certain kinds of buildings is gonna be beneficial. But for now, let's take a look at the rules about how you place those tiles into your cities. Tiles within a city must be placed in the same orientation, and both players should be able to read the scoring conditions easily. Once you've decided how the tiles will face, this cannot be changed. Other than the first tile, all the rest must be placed, so at least one full side of the new tile is adjacent to another tile already in play. And any time the game refers to a tile being adjacent, it means vertically, or horizontally, and once placed, a tile cannot be moved in a later step. As your city grows, it must be contained within a four by four grid. So I couldn't place this new tile here because the width of my city is now five. I also couldn't put it here because its height would be greater than four. Now, although partners should be working together, you may encounter a situation where players just cannot agree on who should place their piece first in their combined city. In this case, the player with the lower value in the seat randomization would place first, 
and then the other player would go. Once all players have placed the tile into each of their two cities, check how many tiles are underneath the city tokens. If there's more than one, then take the pile underneath the token to your right. Once everyone has done this, then again, you'll go through the tiles in your hand, choose two to put face down, placing the rest under the city token on your left. And again, once everyone has done this, you reveal your chosen tiles. Players will now negotiate again and then place one of each of their tiles into each of their two cities. You will continue repeating these steps and growing your cities until there is only one tile under each of the city tokens. These are removed from play and put face down onto the scoreboard. At this point, each city should have six tiles in it, marking the end of the first round. In the second round, you'll take these duplex tiles and deal three to each of the players. And again, each player will choose two of them to keep, one to put underneath of a city token, and then everyone reveals and negotiates where they should place the two tiles that they've chosen. Treat these tiles just like two regular buildings that are stuck together following all the rules outlined before, including matching orientation and staying within the 4x4 city limits. In the case of a duplex, only a single of its squares needs to be adjacent to another piece already in play. Once the duplexes have been placed, collect the ones sitting underneath of the city tokens and place them unseen on the scoreboard. That marks the end of the second round. For the third round, deal out seven new single tiles to each of the players, and then repeat the steps of round one, except this time, place your unchosen tiles underneath the city token to your right, and collect new ones from the city token on your left. Once you've completed the third round, each city should be a full 4x4 grid. Now it's time to calculate the scores of the cities, and you'll start by removing any of the unused tiles that were placed on the scoreboard during the game. You'll also notice that each of the cities has a token to represent it, and a matching token that you'll use to track each city's score on the scoreboard. One of the players at the table should announce each type of building as shown on the player aid one by one while players calculate the score that type of building provides for the city on their left, moving the matching score token to the value on the track that that city receives. In a moment, I'll explain how each building type contributes to a city's final score, but for now, let's assume that these are the final values of each of the three cities that we built in this example. A player's final score is the lower of the two values of the cities that they worked on. So while I worked on this purple city, which actually scored the most points, I also worked on this city, which scored the least points. And I have to take the lower value, so my final score is 42. The player over here has a similar problem. They worked on both the green and white building. So again, they have to take the lower value of those two. They also score 42 points. The player seated in this position worked on both the green and the purple building. The green value is lower, so their final score is 50, but that's higher than the final score of the other two players, so this player wins. If players tie in their final scoring, the tied players compare their highest scoring cities. If there's still a tie, those players add and compare the number of tiles in both their cities matching the first type shown on the player aid. And then, if that doesn't break the tie, they continue down the list until the tie is broken. But now let's go back and see how each building type contributes to a city's final score. Each tile along the bottom has a code to help you remember how it scores. This, for example, is a shop and it's worth a number of points depending on how many you have in a straight row. Two points for a single shop, five for two in a row, 10 for three, and 16 for four. However, a single shop is never scored twice within the same city. For example, we have two rows here, so I'd have to pick one to score as a group. This one here for 10 points, and then this would count as its own row of just one shop for two points. Parks score points for each connected group that you have, but they don't need to be in a straight line. They simply have to share borders. One park by itself is worth two, two together are worth eight, three are worth 12, and every park past three in the same group of parks is worth one additional point. So in a case like this, we have four connected parks that will provide a total of 13 points. In this case, we have two separate parks that are not connected, so we'll score them separately. This is a park of two tiles, so it provides eight points to the city, and this one on its own provides an additional two points. 
The city that has the most factories will score four points for each of its factories, the second most will score three points for each, and all the rest will score two points for each. If there is a tie for first or second, any tied cities claim the same bonuses. There are four different types of taverns, each showing a different icon inside of the red diamond. A city scores points for the number of different taverns it has. One for one, four for two, nine for three, and 17 for having all four different taverns. Taverns do not need to be connected, and you can have duplicates within the same city. They simply start a new set. So these three unique taverns are going to provide this city with nine points, and this duplicate starts its own set and provides one additional point. The more offices you have in a city, the more points they're worth, and they don't have to be connected. You get one point for having one office, three points for two, all the way up to 21 points for having six offices in the same city. If you have more than six offices, start counting them as a new set that will score you additional points beginning again at one. So with eight offices in a city, you would get 21 points for the first six and then three points for the next two. Each office also gets one bonus point if they are orthogonally adjacent to at least one tavern, like we have here. But regardless of the number of taverns surrounding an office, an office gains no more than one bonus point from this effect. Houses are worth one point for each type of building that you have in your city, regardless of the amount of each type. So if your city only has taverns and offices, your houses would be worth two points each. If your city had all five of the other types of buildings, then each of your houses is worth five points. However, nobody likes to live next to a factory. Any house with a side adjacent to a factory is worth a total of one point regardless of the other building types in your city. This house is in a city that has all five of the different building types, so it's worth five points. This one is in the same city, but unfortunately, it's next to a factory, so it's only worth one point. And all of the buildings follow this kind of thematic sensibility in their scoring. Shops work well when they're on streets together, and factories work best when they outmatch their competitors. People prefer a greater variety of dining options, and big parks are more magnificent. People also want jobs to go to work at, and on their lunch breaks, they prefer to be close to a tavern. And homeowners just want a variety of options, but they'd really prefer not to live next to a factory. And that's everything you need to know to play Between Two Cities. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below, and I'll gladly answer them as soon as I get a chance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.